I'm Alex Hirsch, the voice of Grunkle Stan. <laughs> I'm Jason Ritter, the voice of Dipper. And I'm Kristen Shaw, the voice of Mabel. <laughs> That's her real voice, guys. Like, real when she's voice. not on, quote unquote. Nah, nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last Mabel Corn. Oh, j- just thinking about this episode gives me some Four. traumatic flashbacks. Why? Um, well, so C4 there sleeping on his couch. That's basically me in my office. Um, yes. At this point in the season, we were very late, late into the season, um, and there was an episode that we were working on that we could not for the life of us crack. It was going to be an epi- a episode about Wendy um, that was like, I always wanted to do a Wendy episode. I think she's a great character, and I felt that like it would be a crime to end the series without an episode all about her. And so we tried to come up with one, and th- there was an outline, and it was about... Uh, it was about her sort of relationship with her family and her insane lumberjack dad. Um, but oh my gosh. It, it involved her at some point getting weather controlling powers. Um, like, because we needed magic. We needed something that was like a con- connection to the magic of the world. Um, and some, somehow that was the thing that we wound up with. And it, it didn't work. It felt too crazy. And also, Frozen had just come yeah, out. It sounds like an X Men episode. Yeah, it just. Pro- it didn't feel like, well, because Wendy's a really grounded character. Um, and so it's sort of like, it's something we kind of come up with in the room. And then when the script came back, it was, you know, through no fault of the writer, it wasn't working. And we were really behind. And I realized I had a choice, which is we could either produce this episode that really didn't seem in character for Wendy, or I could write a new episode in two days. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so the last Mabel Corn was born. Really? Um, yes. Whoa. Um, like, th- that's why I'm the only writer credited on this episode. Um this, the other thing that was happening at this point in the series was we were planning the finale of the show, which we knew was going to be this giant apocalypse. Um, and so I had a few different concerns. One concern was this Wendy episode's not working. Another concern is we have a giant apocalypse coming up that we really haven't set up in any meaningful in, in any meaningful way. Um, and my other concern just being like we hadn't really done a, a any any Mabel episodes in a while at this point in the series, and she's supposed to be you know our, our co lead. Um, and so co. Yeah, I would say. Oh. <laughs> it's an argument to say who's the lead. Um, and so I kind of had, that was my Aww. checklist of things that needed to be accomplished. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I had 48 hours. So I, I was, as a kid, I was a, I remember seeing the movie The Last Unicorn. Oh, yeah. um, very, like, not very well known, like, weird Rankin Bass I it. animated I watched it after movie. This. Like, uh, Mia Farrow is, it, it plays the world's most entitled, stuck up, arrogant unicorn. She's just awful. Um, in this movie, um, and Jeff Bridges plays this like dopey prince, and he sings a song. It's it's an objectively it's terrible weird. movie. I love it. I have so much nostalgia for it. But it always was really funny to me this depiction of unicorn who like she she meets up with this like this wizard who's trying to help her find the other unicorns. And every time he hel- he helps her, she's like, "How dare you! You screwed up the spell! Nay, nay!" And she's just so awful. Um, and it's really funny to me the idea of a unicorn who is just a colossal pain. But she's not supposed to be awful, right? I don't That's just think a mistake. So. I, I think it, I think the tone of the movie she's supposed to be like regal and lovable. But like at one point she's about to get d- killed by this giant monster and the wizard who's just sort of this like I think his name is Schmendrick. He's like oh, he's yeah, got yeah. kind of this Woody Allen wizard. He's like, I'm going to do what I can with my magic. And he turns her into a human. He saves her, and she doesn't thank him. She's like, I'm, I am I feel my body dying inside this human form. Like, she's just has no gratitude for anybody. <laughs> and you just you gradually hate her more and more over the course of the movie. So I, I had always thought it would be funny if Mabel meets a unicorn who's as awful as the unicorn for the last <laughs> unicorn. And at some point, she punches the unicorn in the face. That was pretty much... That, that was sort of where I started with this episode. Um, and then I also wanted to tee up... The uh, the apocalypse. Yes. Um, so that's where that cold open comes from, and that's where this plot with Dipper and Ford, where Ford in this episode is setting up a few important plot points. He's setting up the metal plate in his head, mm-hmm. which is the reason that uh, he can't trick Bill into entering his mind in the in the finale. He's setting right. up Weird Mageddon and what it means and what it's going to look like. Um, we're setting up that Bill wants to smash that orb. Um, so it it ultimately ended up all working out. I'm really actually glad that I made this change late in the game because it set up a lot of really important things. Um, but it's that's just sort of, in TV writing like you're always, you're moving quickly and things are changing and you're always sort of putting, you're, you're saying here's our plan and then you're checking in on it and saying like, did it work? Because <laughs> right. you have your idea of how something's going to turn out but yeah. you, you don't know until you see those, you know, those first drafts um, second draft, third draft and you're always hoping like we can make it work and this was something where I just had to, like, I was kind of running on empty, but I'm like, all right, pulling an episode out of my pocket. Here it is, guys. Last Mabel Corn. Um, and all that said, it's it's a miracle that it came out, like, yeah, fun and funny. Like, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I got to give a shout out to our art director. Our art director, Ian Worrell, did an amazing job of oh, this. Yeah. It is such a... The Mystery Shack is already full of so many spooky and creepy locations, and he never fails erasing. to come up with another great one. Oh, I was How did you get J.K. Simmons? J.K. Simmons uh, was... Uh, he was right around that. This is right, right, right before he won the Oscar um, for Whiplash, and he was like kind of doing in the middle of all anything, that buzz. Anything he could do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was, I was like, he was so good, and we, we knew he would be perfect. And I would say, like, he, he's the most I've ever been impressed with. Just a sight unseen. Like he comes in, like at seven a.m. He picks up a script he's never looked at. There's massive monologues, and just like one take, no flubs, immediately gets it. Like he's such a pro. Is yeah. sort of mind blowing to work with. Yeah, he sounds really amazing. Unlike some people. <laughs> I no. mean, I could. I work better at five a.m. myself. I love that Grenda has uh, her moment to shine here. Yeah. It was. We also wanted to. This was something that I I noticed that we hadn't seen. Just Mabel and her and her Girlfriend. female friends together. In a while, and and also, you know, because we had wanted to do a Wendy episode, but we we couldn't f crack it. I wanted Wendy to be an important part of this episode. I, I like the idea that a third of the way through, Wendy sort of takes over and is just like, "All right, we're we're doing a Wendy story now. I'm just gonna get fairy dust by hook or crook. I don't care about morals and rules." <laughs> um, and this unicorn was <laughs> voiced van by. What band did you see? Oh yeah, sorry. Have you have you have you never seen a van with a unicorn airbrushed on the side of it? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I, I laughed it's silly, but because I definitely have. Uh, this unicorn is voiced by uh, Sam Marin, uh, who does like half of the characters on regular show. He was a classmate of mine at Cal Arts. He's a really talented animator, and he's also really good at voices. And I knew that he had a yeah, I knew he had a fancy lady in him. <laughs> Take off your shoes. I have a whole thing about shoes. Uh, uh, I'm talking to all of you. Celeste Bella Bethabel, we have journeyed far and wide. About an hour. On a mission to protect our family with your magical hair. This is your chance. Kristen, when, when you were Mabel's age, how much were you like Mabel? Oh, so much like her. I was a lot like Mabel. I would say 90%. I had braces. Um, I had boy crushes. What What was your opinion on unicorns at Mabel's age? Oh, I loved them. I had my little ponies. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the original run. My sister has all of them uh -huh. from like the same time. Like my sister had My Little Ponies yeah. too. It there was. You. I was more of a Care Bears guy myself. Oh, <laughs> wait, who is your favorite Care Bear? Uh, well, I like the the little sort of turquoise. Like cub one. Oh, you like the Care Bear? Oh yeah, yeah. The, and the then cub. I also really like the raccoon one from Wait, like the Care Bear, Care Bear cousins. cousins. Talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> I got major memory. Well, see, that's one of the things about being a twin is like, I I saw lots of My Little Pony growing yeah. up, and because like we would just like watch them together, and every other movie we got, she got to pick, I got to pick. Yeah. But so like I have very nostalgic memories of Care Bears of My Little Pony. Like I remember Hugs and Tugs were two twin Hugs Care and Bears. Tugs. There was a pink Tugs. one and a blue one. Tugs was the one. And that me and my I sister's like, it's us. We're twins, boy and a girl. Hugs and Tugs. Like that's so funny. Tugs is my favorite. Yeah, Tugs is a pretty great Care Bear, guys. Oh my oh, god, that poor that's bird. So that sweet. Poor Big bird. fan of Tugs, guys. <laughs> or was it Hugs? Guys, they entirely. solved their problems by caring so much. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh -huh. We yeah. need a little bit more Sincerity of that. Sincerity was cool, and then the '90s, it was lame, yeah, and exactly. it's like kind of coming around again. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, read it. Read it all. Read think, it all. Pause uh, it and read it all. I think our writer Jeff Rowe wrote whatever nonsense is, is on that scroll. Um, and Andy Gonzalez, who illustrated uh, most of the journal pages, he did that. Like his version of like a spooky Mad Fulden did a great job. That was cool. With a little code in the middle there with that secret language. So there's this dialogue we changed a lot because there's so much setup happening here. And it's when you've got a lot of moving pieces, like your th those lines that describe like plot setup are the ones that end up like. You you are adjusting them until the last second to make sure they work. Yeah. Is that a code on the screen? I Probably. I'd be shocked if it wasn't, but I don't remember. It's been so long. Uh, to anyone watching, I I, I I offer you to freeze frame and look at Dipper's thoughts. They're exactly what you I imagine miss they Tyrone. would be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're great. Wendy, 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 Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something about his fly being down because I remember when I was 12. Oh, Co constantly it was just like eh, barn door is open like 
I, we almost did a, a Dipper's Guide to where his fly is always down and he's like, it's he thinks there's a supernatural cause. He thinks a ghost is doing this to him. <laughs> he's like, I can't just be that clueless all the time. I like Mabel suffocating Stan. <laughs> uh, gotta give uh, Emmy Sierra, one of our storyboard artists, really funny. Did maybe a hundred more gags there that we didn't have time for, but we, we would often give her these funny sequences. I she feel like I saw job. some animatic of some of the that stuff yeah, online. Yeah, I think somewhere. she put them online. How is that even possible? Mabel's a straight up saint, you judgmental hoofbag. <laughs> yeah, you tell her, Wendy. Wrong. Doing good deeds to make yourself look better isn't good at all. Not to mention you're crushing like ten dandelions right now. Those are basically two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the guilt tripping, really laying it on thick. Yeah. We do we do that Mabel would it would really break her. Yeah. This uh, this drawing <laughs> I love that. That is so weird. That was every every now and then like I'll I'll do notes on the storyboards. Um, and usually, I, I'm not a great artist, and usually those drawings will be like cleaned up, and made much better by the artist. But this is one where it made everyone laugh so hard how bad my unicorn drawing was. <laughs> Th then we were like, can we try to preserve a unicorn that looks like it was drawn by somebody who can't draw? Um, that is so funny. It, it made us laugh because it was dumb. My uh, my buddy Penn who created Adventure Time, something he he told me when we were like just coming up in animation was try to make the smartest thing you can, and if it's not good, then try to make the dumbest thing you can. And I think I think about that advice a lot. <laughs> Interesting. So this is That's this is where Wendy, Wendy takes over. Way. Yeah, well, I I wanted to see her uh, see a little bit more Wendy in this episode, and Linda of uh, course does a fantastic job. Ouch. <laughs> I would want Grenda on my side in any heist. So this this upcoming scene is maybe the most surprised I've ever been to see something be allowed to be on the show. Flagon of your daintiest honeysuckle, please. I'm gonna need to see some ID. Whoa, the cops! Hit the deck! I'm looking for someone who knows how to take down a unicorn. No tricks or games. We are human. We take what we want. Yeah! Fairy dust. A whole magic bag is enough to put a unicorn out cold. But if I do you a favor, you gotta do something for me. Just spill it, half pint! Butterfly trafficking is illegal in this part of the forest. That, that's Sam Marin still doing the voice, uh, doing another voice. He's got a great range. I never knew that. Same voice as Celeste Beth the Bell. Yeah, Celeste and, Bell and that guy. Rest, rest, rest in peace, Schmebulock Sr. Uh, who you met briefly who in. Who we met uh, briefly yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> Two bags of fairy dust, just like we agreed. Where do you get this stuff? Everyone likes sausage, but no one likes to know how it's made. You disgust me! So does that mean that fairy dust is ground up fairies? <laughs> I, I couldn't say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, th look to the right, the deer with the police siren oh, on it. Yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite addition by the story artist. <laughs> the scene used to go a little bit longer. He says, my cut, and Grenda says, uh, like, to protect and serve, huh? And he goes, in this part of the forest, you gotta serve yourself. Like, it just keeps going. <laughs> Winnie <laughs> This is that was a dated joke even then. <laughs> I, was, you know, I was like I said, kind of running on empty at this point. <laughs> That's Morse code for uh, SOS, guys. Nice, nicely done. No wait! Stop, Mabel. Shh, you'll wake her up. But this is wrong, guys. Um, another another reference for with Celeste Bell about the Bell. My sort of note to the artist was: let's make it a combination between the Last Unicorn, My Little Pony, and Lisa Frank colors. So that's why she's got that insane hair. <laughs> and what about the eyes? The, the eyes, I, I I can't I can't explain. <laughs> I love Grenda's high stuff. <laughs> Uh, this is me and Matt Chapman as normal unicorns. We learned that Celeste Bella Beth Bell is just as awful as the last unicorn in the movie, <laughs> The Last Unicorn. <laughs> All our dumb horns can do is glow, point towards the nearest rainbow, and play rave music. <laughs> we wanted rave. to say point towards the nearest Trapper Keeper, but Trapper Keeper's, I guess, copywritten. Oh, I Couldn't use that keepers. phrase. Like, oh. you can't say Kleenex or Xerox on certain... Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Shut up! All this time. All this time I thought I was a bad person. 
but you're even worse than I am! Yeah, Mabel. Yeah, Mabel. Ah. So good, so good. Like, just... Like, you're, you're able to... There's something about your voice, Kristen, which is very unique, which is, like, angry Mabel is still very likable. <laughs> like, even when you're mad, there's, you're able to do it in a way that, like, I root for her, I feel for her, I'm glad she punched that unicorn in the face. <laughs> like, I'm 100% on her side. Uh-huh. We, um, we actually animated this fight that's coming up, um, but we had to cut it for time just because the episode was over long. So there is a footage somewhere of Grenda repeatedly punching one of these unicorns. <laughs> Uh, this sequence storyboarded by Sabrina Cotunio. Uh, she did a fantastic job of, like, this is a pretty tense scene. Like, this yeah. episode whiplashes from, like, a really goofy B story to, like, this entire sequence, which Dipper briefly believes that Ford is evil. Um, and there was a lot of fan speculation when we first meet Ford. Generally, when television shows introduce a, like, new mysterious character late in the game, they turn out to be a villain. Right. Like, nine yeah. out of ten times they turn out to be a villain or they're there to get killed off to show the stakes of something. And, like, we could have made Ford evil, um, but I always felt that that would be less interesting and it would be, like, the point that I was trying to get to is that Stan and Ford had this relationship that fell apart and it was both of their faults. Yeah. And, like, I thought that if I'm Stan, I'd be more frustrated if Ford is actually a good guy. Yes, right? right. Like, it would drive me insane if he's pretty reasonable, pretty rational, better at me than everything. Um, so we, we flirted with this brief moment where it seems like he's a villain. Um, and we re worked really hard to make it so that, like, his eyes are being covered by the reflection of the light. Um, and, like, his, his dialogue is ambiguous enough here that for a moment you believe what Dipper believes, which is maybe he's possessed by Bill. Well, you just saw him shaking Bill's yeah. hand. What is he yeah. supposed to believe? Exactly. I thought he was. Mm. So did I. And I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that we were able to, again, this episode wasn't one that we had planned on. And I'm glad we were able to get to this because it was able to give a little bit of that connective tissue to his relationship with Bill. Um, because originally in Tale of Two Stands, there was going to be an end tag where we see that him and Bill knew each other. And we realized, like, this is too big an idea to try to cram in the end of an episode. We need to put it in a the middle of more. one, give yeah. it some meat. Oops. And at this point in the series, the fandom was enormous. Like, the amount of people paying attention and really caring about this stuff, like... So we were really trying to figure out if we could pay off what we set up at this point. Yeah. Wait, it's okay, Dipper. were his glasses cracked like that? Always cracked. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. That really was All of a sudden I was like, wait, did he, did Dipper crack him? <laughs> Dipper, I was a fool to try to hide all this. The reason I, I, uh, I, I did a movie uh, after. Oh my God, he... Brag. Oh my gosh, oh my <laughs> Someone God. Someone did a tell movie. One story. Oh, I grew up on a farm, all this stuff, oh, and I, I can't tell one farm, story. I did a movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Tell us about the movie, Jason. Please. Anyway, J.K. Simmons was in the movie, and okay. I was super excited to. What movie to... was it? It was called The Meddler. I only had a couple scenes in it. But, and what was um, it like working with Mr. Simmons? I didn't actually get to work with him, but I was... <laughs> I, this I anecdote to, is going down the tubes fast. The point is that I was about <laughs> as excited to meet him as, uh, as, as Dipper, Dipper would is. be to meet Ford. It so was it was just moment. that scene writ it was, in reality. Yeah, it was basically just that, where I was like, oh, do you know that I'm on this show with you? Do you even know? But you didn't He was very meet. nice. Oh, you did meet him? Yeah, we, oh, yeah, we had oh. a whole chat. I just didn't work in a scene with him. Oh, so you had a chat like at the craft service table or outside his trailer? Or... Yeah, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> okay, it's not that great of a story. I just, uh, I love this whole sequence. No, it's, I w I'm going to go see the meddler now. He's, uh, when he's, the thing is, he's he's pretty intimidating because he's he plays basically, his. if you're going to typecast him into two categories, it's like the warmest, most trustworthy guy you've ever met and like a serial killer, lunatic, monster jerk, like yeah. the worst person in the world. And so you don't know which... JK you're gonna get <laughs> when you meet him and of course in reality he's he's the sw sweetest most professional dude Yeah, he's incredible. Gotta give again Sabrina shout out for the sequence this idea it's that so cool. the way that it's mapped in 3d around her mind in his mind Like I had no idea what it looked like that and seeing it in the storyboards. It was so much cooler than I imagined Kristen did people ever try to hustle spoilers out of you? No 
Like people, th there was nobody, because like, J Jason, you definitely would get people tweeting you, right? Just being like, what's, what, what secrets can you tell us, right? Yeah, but but more than that, what would happen is uh, like some someone would be like, oh, you know, my son or my daughter is a big fan of Gravity Falls. And then I would freak them out with all of my theories. <laughs> They'd be like, we just are watching it. We're six, you know, we're know. not into the whole, we don't know the whole secret thing. I'd be like, but did you notice that if you look really close in the background, People would want things from me, you know, like a dipper hat or a thing. <laughs> and I don't, and As we didn't have any giant, merch. Yeah, pile there, of I them. wanted, that's why I was like, when I asked you to draw me pictures so I could write back to fans oh, with yeah. a little. So I still have some of that stuff. Oh, and you wrote back it, to some fans, right? Oh, like, yeah. I, there was fan mail that got to me. It hasn't got to me lately. <laughs> kind of dried up. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like I also tried I like I the first like hundred letters I wrote back and then after that I gave oh, up. Oh yeah. Because it was too many. You showed me those boxes in your office. Yeah. It I was promised to myself. The I promised myself I'm gonna write to every single one. Yeah. And then like that proved to be when I'm writing an episode in two days I'm like I don't have time to write a thousand more. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ringo Starr answered uh, every single. Uh... He's a much better man than I. But he stopped. He stopped. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Perfect. Either way, we got the unicorn hair. <laughs> So we thought it was actually funnier just to suggest the fight. Um, I gotta give a shout out to the director of this episode, Matt Brawley. Um, so much of just the great gags and the great staging and figuring out these pieces, like he bared with me in the fact that like this episode came in late and we had to just like pull pull it together with uh, by the skin of our teeth. And one of the things that was great about Matt as a director is that he'd always be down with just adding jokes at the last second, like this joke of Stan running by and screaming money. <laughs> <laughs> always, la it always makes me laugh. That's something yeah. that I think was Matt suggested, and he storyboarded it at the last second. And this also ended up being hugely important for our finale: the idea that yeah. the shack is protected by unicorn hair. So, it's it's a good thing that we were able to get this episode in here, and that Mabel is finally able to meet meet her heroes and discover that they're awful. <laughs> Don't meet your heroes. Don't kids. meet. It's true. Creepy. Except for if your heroes me. I'm I'm okay in real life. Unless your hero is Jason or Kristen. Who, who are those? They're, who? The, they're sweethearts. Alex is cool, too. I'm all right. 